and we're back for episode 9, I think, of Triangle Strategy. Last time, we survived the Avlora battle, thankfully, after like 4 attempts, I think, so you know, that was fun. Um, aside from that... Oh yeah, I was like, what happened story-wise last episode? Because all I could remember was me suffering through the, um, through the Avlora battle. But last time, we decided to protect Roland, and because we're protecting Roland, uh, now Ace Frost, which apparently that's how you say it, not Ace Frost, like I was saying before, which is still the most mind-blowing thing I've heard so far. Um, apparently Ace Frost, I mean S Frost, is now attacking us, and they're not gonna stop attacking us until we, I guess, give up Roland or something. I think that's all that happened, if I remember correctly, story-wise. Oh yeah, we also got... I don't remember if it was last episode. I think it might have been last episode. Um, I think last episode we got three new characters. We got this lady right here, Hosabara, who's a knight slash healer unit, but she can't, she's kinda... I tried using her last battle, uh, thinking she would help us in the Avora battle, <laughs> and I guess her defense is way lower than I expected compared to other guys. So, you know, she's a cool looking unit. Um, she might become more useful over time, but for now she's kind of just here. Although I do love her design very much so. We also got Medina, who really saved us during that last battle. With her um, ability to use items from long range, and... What else does she do? I think she has increased item ability, item power, something like that. Yeah, increases the heck effect of health recovery items. And we got this guy right here, uh, the merchant we buy things from who's basically a pretty good, incredible tank, actually. Uh, last episode, I was actually trashing both Lionel and Medina at the start of the episode, thinking they were not that useful. And I think also Narve, although not that much, because I love Narve. But yeah, I was trashing them, and in the end, they were the, the major reason we made it through that battle, so... Props to our best MVPs right here, Lionel and Medina. Also disappointed in you, Hosabara. I was expecting so much from her, and she disappointed me so hard. Anyway, aside from that, it's time to get back to the uh, story, I guess. Let's see what's happening now that, I guess, uh, Vlora lost the battle against us. Oh yeah, we also got a ton of, a ton of, is it side stories? I think it's side stories. Yeah, side stories we need to do. Also, I guess an update, uh, for, to get the true ending, we won't have to worry about any choices we make until chapter 9. Uh, aside from that, I think we're good to go. So, let's get into side story. Tidings of House Wolford's triumph against all odds and the survival of Prince Roland come in on the wings of a bird. Oh yeah, from this point on, I don't know what's happening story-wise or battle-wise at all. Because this, this was where the demo ended, after you won or lost that battle. House Wolfort triumphed? Yes, my lord. The Archduke's army has already withdrawn to the Crown City. That's right, coward. That said, it would seem the Wolfort army suffered significant casualties. I mean, are you sure about that? It is not as if I entirely failed to consider the possibility of an Esfrasi defeat. And yet, it is hardly an ideal development. Whatever are we to do now? Wolfort may have won the battle, but can they win the war? Maybe. You never know. Hmm. My lord? Ready a bird. I have a missive that needs sending. You better not betray us. As you command. Because I cannot deal with the more strong boss energy, more boss-like enemies uh, in another battle. I feel like they'll crush my hopes and dreams if I face a Blora or anyone like a Blora again. I wonder if we're ever gonna fight the Saintly Seven. If we do, I feel like that'd be pretty cool. Tidings of House Wolford's triumph against all odds and the survival of Prince Roland come in on the wings of a bird. Okay, is this just gonna be the thing everywhere now? I bring good news, my lord. Asfrost army marched on Castle Walford in an attempt to seize the prince. 
but they were roundly defeated by House Wolford's forces and retreat to the Crown City as we speak. Joyous tidings indeed. I knew the Wolferts wouldn't let us down. I'm also pleased to report that Prince Roland is unscathed. It would seem young Sarah Noah is more than capable of carrying on Lord Simon's legacy. I mean, it would help if you Triumph had my back. As they did, they still suffered considerable casualties in the battle. I don't know what you're talking it is about. It's more than likely that Esfrost is already preparing for a second attack. Very well. Take stock of our own forces and determine how many men we oh, can there send we to Wolfert's aid while retaining enough for our own protection. Finally, someone's helping us out. Yes, Lord. It's time to take a stand. If the three high houses come together as one, I am certain we will prevail. I wonder what casualties they're talking about. Because, I mean, I didn't even set the houses on fire. That was part of the reason that battle was so difficult. Sorsley and a Hisense Minister of Salt ponders House Wolfort's improbable victory and the implications it carries for his own nation. Ooh. Someone's getting scared, I think, maybe. Maybe they feel a, a, an ominous threat from us, I guess. To be quite frank, I underestimated House Wolfort's strength. To think they were capable of driving off the S Frosty army forces like that. I suspect the outcome came as a surprise to the Archduke as well. And yet, something tells me Wolfort's victory is more than a fluke. I shall keep that in mind. Still, this development is to our advantage. This will only make it easier to carry out our plans. Just so, Your Excellency. Everything is proceeding as you anticipated. Yes, we shall have our way. It is but a matter of time. Dang it, Sorsley. I can only imagine he has terrible plans for us. And we still don't even know what's going on in that, uh, I think, Norselian Mines, whatever it was called. I hope we find out soon, because it's been like, I think, two chapters now. Maybe three? Maybe three chapters since we were last at the Norsalian Mines. Having driven back the A.S. Frosty army, Serenoa and his companions now search for a way to ensure their survival. I shall see to the wounded. I will help as well. My hawk can assist with clearing the rubble. My thanks to you both. Your aid is most welcome. I am ready. Go safely, Anna, and give my best to the others. We take a risk in entreating a powerful nation for aid. I need you to determine to what extent we can rely on them. Please don't tell me I'm losing Anna. For this chapter. Leave it to me. I've sent Anna to the holy state of Hyzant. Our alliance may not be what it once was, but we must seek help wherever it may be found. In a perfect world, we would be able to count on the cooperation of our neighbors here. Oh, this music Indeed, is nice too, actually. Unity within Glenbrook is of the utmost priority. Especially now that we've ensured Prince Roland's safety. Kind of reminds me of a music from another game, too. But I can't put my finger on it. And yet, we cannot count on Houses Tellior and Falks to act in our best interest. Well, we can't count on House Tellior's, but we can we count on House Falks. For every contingency. You are right, as always, Benedict. We've taken the first step down our chosen path, but there is no telling what awaits us. Do you have a moment, Your Highness? Oh, it's you. As silly as it may sound, 
I've never truly understood what it meant to be royalty. Does my life carry more weight simply because of the blood in my veins? So much so that the lives of others must be sacrificed in my name? You need not worry about that, Roland. Lord Wolfort speaks true. The scales of conviction guided us, but this decision was ours. We have chosen to walk this path with you. I was born the second prince. No one expected great things of me. And yet, simply because I had the good luck to survive, my very existence now necessitates all these sacrifices. If I may be so bold, it was not luck, your highness. To be fair, it might have been luck. We protected you. <laughs> I know this, of course. That's what makes this so hard. You all fought and continue to fight for me. And I can scarcely take care of myself. I need to become stronger. I must. For my own sake and for yours. I mean, to be fair, Roland did survive the last battle till the end. Not a word, my friend. Completed. I feel bad for Roland. He's taking all the hits still <laughs> in this story so far. Well, I guess Serenoa is maybe possibly losing his lat. I mean, <laughs> losing his dad. But we don't know that yet. Maybe. I think. Maybe he won't lose him. Maybe Hyacinth will help out. Probably not, though. House Wolford prevails against General Avlora's army and drives them out of Glenbrook. Though victorious, Roland sobs quietly, saddened by the sacrifices made in his name. Glenbrook is powerless, but knows they must keep the royal bloodline alive. Thus, the conspiracies and power struggles around the noble blood in Roland's veins continue to stain the land crimson. Chapter 8, Part 1, The, v the Weather Vein. Oh my god, six character stories at this chapter, just starting this chapter and we got six, oh my god, okay, what are we looking at, wait, oh, okay, I mean, cool, hello, wait, Corinth then too, oh, oh my gosh, we got, well, something similar to supports, oh, I love it, I wonder if everyone has one. I really hope they do. I love to see interactions between everyone. Uh, who should I start with, actually? I don't even know how long this will be. Let me save just in case. I wonder if I'll get an item or something out of this. Hopefully I do, because I mean... Well, actually, it's a new chapter. I can go to the encampment and buy things. Yes. I think they might have... If I'm lucky, they'll have another Medal of Bravery. Please tell me you do. Dang it. Really? Well... That sucks. I can at least buy stuff from you, I guess. Dang it! You too! Well, okay, so nothing's refreshed yet. Uh, do you have anything... I can... You have a new battle. Okay. You face a force made up of troops from the Grand Book, Ace Frost, and, Hi and High Scent. Pay attention to the special attributes of each nation's troops, and take care not to let their synergies overwhelm you. Oh, that's cool. Okay, I'm really looking forward to doing that one. I only get timber out of it, which kind of sucks, but I can level up probably you guys to level 12 with that. So, guess I'll be doing that in just a bit. First, it's time for character stories. I guess let's start with Frederica. Frederica has an important matter to discuss with Gila. Lord Saranoa never ceases to amaze me. Despite all the hours he dedicates to his duties, he looks none the worse for wear. Even so, I am certain it takes its toll on him. He wants to set an example for his people and those who serve him, and wishes not to worry them over his condition. 
Excuse me, Saranoa, but is there anything I could do to help? Ah, Frederica, my apologies for the delay. The citizen's petition will require a bit more time, so why don't you and Gila return home ahead of me? I see. If you insist. But please do not push yourself too hard, Saranoa. I shan't. Thank you, Frederica. Of course. Okay, I was worried that that was it. <laughs> I was gonna be so disappointed if that was all of it. Is something the matter? It's rare of you to sigh like that. Did I? Oh my. It looks like something's troubling you. If you wish to talk about it, I am happy to lend an ear. Well, to be perfectly honest, I sometimes wonder if I can go on like this. Are things not going well with Lord Saranoa? No! Saranoa is as kind and gentle as ever. It is my own self I have doubts about. I cannot help but wonder if I am truly of any use to him. Since Lord Saranoa is always working so hard, why not give him a tonic to boost his vitality? I purchased one from a merchant not long ago. It should chase all his fatigue away. A good idea to be sure, but the fact remains it is not me myself that is serving him. Then how about preparing a meal for him? Something nutritious to fill him with vim and vigor. Me? Cook? I mean, you have fire yes. magic. I'm certain he would be delighted by anything that you make. But I've never cooked before. I doubt anything I make would suffice. You won't know until you try. Besides, what matters isn't the result, but the feeling behind it. Use this cookbook. I'm sure you will find a recipe or two to your liking. Thank you, Gila. Now then. Which of these would Saranoa enjoy? Oh, well that was cute. Gila's out here giving the best life advice. Well, I guess relationship advice to be more precise. I wonder if they're... If they only have one character story like that or... Can you get multiple with those, like, same characters? It'd be cool if it did, but it might also get repetitive, so... I feel like they might not do that. Eridor relaxes at the encampment when Huey comes to him with a question. Seems as if the troubles never cease. I'd kill for a drop of ale. I take it you and Benedict have seen your share of trouble. You have both served House Wolfort for many years, yes? Aye. We both served Lord Simon since we were green between the ears. Through the good times and the bad. To see him now, you wouldn't believe the stories of what we got up to in our tender years. Even then, though, he was always the schemer. Always drawn me into his fanciful plots. Has so much changed since then? <laughs> I don't reckon so. In any case, was there something you wanted to ask me? There was. The other day, Benedict posed quite the strange question to me. Several days ago. Snowbell Blossom's Bloom? Indeed. I thought perhaps you had seen trace of the flowers while scouting with Flugi. Did he just say Flugi? Oh my gosh, we got a name for the bird. Oh, that's cute. 
Well, I'm guessing that's the bird. <laughs> Hopefully that's not a person. I'm in the deep mountain passes before, but not of late. So it is as I thought. They have ever been a rare sight, even more so in recent years. I had thought to procure one, but it may be wise to temper my expectations in that regard. Life always finds a way to flourish. I am certain Anna and I can find one before long. I would not have you chasing my idle fancies. You both have more vital duties to attend to. I... of course. So, Benedict's looking for a snowbell blossom. What's so peculiar about that? Nothing. If it were anyone else asking. However, I think you'd agree that Benedict is not the type to go picking flowers on a whim. They say that when a snowbell blooms... That moment is frozen in time. Ah, oh, that's cute. Okay. Precisely. You and Benedict both never fail to surprise. But of all flowers, why the snowbell? Does he have some lady love I'm unaware of? Oh, that'd be hilarious. I can't speak to that, but I'll tell you one thing, Hewitt. We've all got moments locked away and placed close to our hearts. You, me, even a stubborn-headed mule like Benedict. Like the snowbell, we want him frozen like that forever. And, like the Snowbell, they're liable to shatter if we let another handle them carelessly. I feel like we got a major tone shift. Like, oh my gosh. How do we go, how do we go from, oh, from talking about possibly being a lady or, you know, reminiscing old times to this so quickly? I understand. I apologize if I was too forward. Let us forget the matter. Oh, this music is nice too. No. It isn't you that needs to apologize. I'm always telling Benedict no one likes being lectured. It was enlightening. I see you and Benedict are true friends. For lack of a better word, I. Bring me a draft of ale, and I'll tell you all about our younger days. At least, what I can remember. Hey, let me read that again real quick. Remember. I recall Benedict wasn't nearly as capable as he is now. Hmm. I may have to take you up on that offer. Do you really reckon snowbells are still blooming somewhere out there? Perhaps. Though I've not seen them in this region, they may still bloom in the southern reaches. In other words, a trek and a half from here. Give up the search, my friend. Okay, I, I I need some closure on that. Please tell me there's a there's another one between Eridor and Benedict at some point. Because I have a couple questions. Like I can see that being just a, you know an emotional moment and trying to you know protect something fragile or whatever. But I want to know if there's like something deeper to it. Okay, I guess move on to the next one. We actually went. <laughs> We went from, there's been two major tone shifts now that I think about it. We went from Frederica and Gila who were just, you know, talking about a couple of things. And then we went to this. That was, hmm, that was an interesting tone shift, to say the least. Gila realizes that she shares some surprising similarities with a certain someone. Ooh, is it Narve? Maybe? Is it my boy? Or not? This wasn't. Oh wait, never mind. Greetings. Were you training outside? I got, I got, I got. Oh my! I was thinking so many things all at once. Not today. Even I stay away from the proving grounds on occasion. The members of the King's Guard must keep themselves in prime fighting shape. That includes resting when our bodies are weary. Hmm. A wise policy. The handmaidens of Esfras adhere to a similar principle. With clear eyes, we see, we serve, we anticipate. 
Interesting. Although our tools are different, we're alike in our aims. Indeed. We must be the pillars our charges turn to in times of need. Even so, we are only human. If I may ask in confidence, do you ever find it... trying to serve Prince Roland? Is he ever unreasonable? Have you ever found your patience tested? No, never. It is an honor to serve, always. It is an odd question to ask, but I must confess I find it hard to imagine what it is like to serve in a society such as us, Frost's. As do I, although I lived through it. It all feels as if it were so long ago. You're not one for speaking plain, are you? But I suspect we may have much in common. I'm curious to hear your story, if you are willing to share it. Of course. I made a promise to myself long ago to effect change through my own deeds, not to live as a mere servant. And what came of that promise? Hailing from Hyzant, at first I endeavored to learn at the Ministry that I might use the knowledge gained there to help others. But they guard their secrets fiercely and maintain strict control over what fields their students can pursue. As much as it pained me to leave my home, I could not suffer such stifling rules, and so set forth to Ezra. Oh, so she's from Hyzant. I took quickly to learning at the archives, Interesting. where independent study is encouraged. I spent days in the stacks, soaking up as much knowledge as I could. When one day... You are the one Who the heck are you? Killer, yes? Well, I can't view profile. Okay. Yes, my lord. They tell me you're the most talented researcher the Archives have ever seen. I couldn't say that, my lord. Though I do spend more time here than most anyone else. Admirable modesty. And you aren't frightened of me. Most impressive. I believe we have a suitable role for you. Come with me. The Archduke would have a word. The Archduke? But... No harm will come to you, if that is your fear. Now, follow me. Lord Zvarog had arranged an audience with the former Archduke of Esfrost, who appointed me as Frederica's personal tutor. Oh. She was the former Archduke's daughter, so I took my duty seriously. Yet I could never shake the feeling that I had betrayed my ideals. Perhaps I justified it by telling myself that my teachings could plant the seed for change. An indirect approach, but an active one nonetheless. The chance was unexpected to be sure, but I could not very well deny it. The Archduke's successor, Gustadov, was a man that paid no heed to birth or blood. He affected a change in people's attitudes, a change which provided fertile ground in which my teachings could take root. Thus, I stayed by Frederica's side. Truth be told, I had not thought to be with her for this long. And yet, here I am. Life is truly a journey of unforeseen destinations. Oh, that was some interesting lore. If she taught Frederica magic, why couldn't she tell her healing magic? I'm just curious how magic works, like, as a whole in this game. Because, I mean, we have mages that can only cast specific spells. But then we also have, like, Narve. But Narve also is supposed to be the son of some great magician, so... Hmm. I don't know. I hope we get an explanation of magic soon. Oh, hey, Corinthin. Eridor invites Corinthin to take a break from all his research. Okay. Working hard again today, I see. How fares the research? It progresses, and shall continue to do so. 
Provided you remain out of my way. <laughs> Never one to mince words, are you? What is it you're researching exactly? Your questioning remains distressingly inefficient. As I explained just yesterday, I'm exploring something truly groundbreaking. And I'm asking you precisely how and why it's groundbreaking. That would entail a thorough explanation of surface melting on ice crystals, one even you could understand. From there, I would have to explain how the quasi-liquid film on said crystal can then be thermodynamically stabilized. All right, all right, you win. I'm sorry I asked. But I can tell by your attitude all this work isn't good for you. You should join me for a swig of wine. I'd rather not. Then why not? Research has shown that wine inhibits the brain's higher functions. Fewer words, more wine. A glass might shake a brilliant new idea out of that massive head of yours. But my precious research! All I desire is to carry out my research on him. on him. Without interruption. Are you listening, Eridor? Oh my gosh, I love this. My research on my terms. Why can they not <gasps> grant me this one thing? Flashbacks yeah, to Dragon. No. This cannot stand, Eridor. You hold me out here. <laughs> yet you haven't so much as drank haven't touched your glass oh so you're an angry drunkard are you lovely <laughs> this is great i need more Me? drunk characters drunkard <laughs> balder for balder dash it's the damn ministry all their restrictions and secrecy how are we to pr <gasps> move forward if we can't share our techniques you're damned right. As always, of course, about everything. Sin on all that knowledge and skills is... It's not good. Worse than me locking my, myself up here. I... Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> they actually made an animation for him. Glorious silence. Thought the poor fool had never shut up. Right then, off to bed with you. I don't know how they got such good... I guess, how they got such good um voice acting for the drunk talking. Because it sounds incredible. I really want to see some more drunk characters now. Julio and Arador are out, are out on patrol when they come across a deplorable act in progress. Please, you can't take our wheat. We just sent food the other day. Silence. Lord Walford has ordered the requisition of all provisions. You wouldn't dare disobey your lord, would you? Of course not. I... I just can't believe Lord Walford would command such a thing. He wouldn't. Are you accusing me, a noblewoman of Glenbrook, of lying? Yeah. <laughs> How dare you? Peasant. I mean, the noble people of Glenbrook are corrupt, so, you know, not the most dependable people out there. Mayhap we should see what the commotion is about. Mind telling us what's going on? <gasps> well, if it isn't Captain Eridor, thank you for all that you do to keep these lands safe. The jig is up. You're one of the lot what recently fled from the Crown City, ain't you? Just so, yes. I came to humbly lend what aid I could to Lord Wolford and deliver on the provisions I promised. What is your quarrel with these people? If you could explain the situation, we'd be more than happy to lend what aid we can. Please, I beg of you, don't take our food. It's all we have. I've always known Lord Wolford to care for his people above all. Why would he do this to us? What madness is this? Lord Saranoa has strictly forbidden commandeering food from the common folk. 
Surely you aren't asking these good people to relinquish their stores to you in his name. I am simply gathering provisions on Lord Walfort's behalf, as I promised. Honestly, he should be grateful. Grateful? <laughs> He'd be red in the face if he saw what you were doing. Ain't no way he ordered it. On the contrary, you are acting in violation of your Lord's decree. We cannot overlook your actions. You will come with us and be jailed. There, you will await judgment for your crimes. Oh, dang. What nonsense is this? I am a noblewoman of Glenbrook. And? How dare you try to order me about, you self-important little man? You've no authority over me! Oh my gosh. Look, I ain't disagreeing. But are you sure we should accost her without seeking Lord Serenoa's counsel first? We haven't that luxury. The longer she is allowed to roam free, the more the people will suffer. And our Lord's good name be sullied. We must show the people that unethical acts will not go unpunished. Take her away. You will pay for your impudence! Can't believe there are scoundrels out here using House Wolfort's name for ill gain. You've done us all proud today, Yulio. Thank you ever so much, my lord. We'd be facing starvation if you hadn't stepped in. She really had us fooled. We should have known Lord Wolfort is too kind a man to order anything like that. If you are ever troubled again, please seek me out. I shall ensure that any wrongs committed against you are set right. Well, that was a nice scene, I guess. Didn't actually have that much development between um, Eredor and Julio, but still a good scene, I guess. Jens shows Saranoa a book he borrowed from the arch archives. Archives or archives? I think it's archives. That tome is an apprentice's resource, if I'm not mistaken. Are you studying ironworking? Yes, I borrowed it some time ago from the archives in the Grand Duchy of Esfrost. I haven't had a chance to return it, what with the state of affairs being as it is. Ian's? I can't remember the last time you privileged us with a visit. Well, my weapons aren't going to forge themselves. But now that I've a respite from my days of sweat and flame, I thought I'd continue my studies. You hunger for knowledge the way a fire hungers for kindling. I'd never have become the blacksmith I am if not for what I gleaned from these tomes. If it takes a lifetime of studying and striving to forge the perfect weapon, then so be it. One day, all will know the name of Ian's. The greatest smithy the realm has ever seen! That is all well and good, but would you mind proclaiming that a little more quietly? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, apologies. In my excitement, I quite forgot I was in a library. I must say, I can't help but admire your burning ambition. But while we're speaking in hushed tones, our army has been anything but quiet as of late. You forge weapons for them, yes? Might you have any insight into the matter? I wish I did, but I have scant time for the goings-on outside my own small forge. Though, now that you mention it, my orders from the army have increased. Could it be that they're preparing for war? <laughs> As if a war could break out on the eve of our three nations' grand new venture. Oh yeah, that definitely ain't happening Indeed. anytime soon. That would be unthinkable. S. Frost's sudden attack on Glenbrook confirmed my worst fears. And once the war started, I could forget about returning this book. But I still hope to. One day, 
when peace has returned to our realm. I hope you will fight by my side till it does. Without hesitation, my lord. You know what I just remembered? I was thinking about the, um, blow guy, bow guy, we could have got him from, um, Ace Frost had we gone uh, to Ace Frost as an envoy. And I'm thinking, I wonder what happened to him. He might be dead. He might be in prison or something like that. And also, I wonder if he would have been useful in that Uplora battle. Because, I mean, he does a ton of damage. And he's a bow user, so he can hit enemies from range. So that probably would have been somewhat helpful, actually. But I guess I'll never know now. Maybe someday I'll find out. And I guess that's all the character stories. I kind of liked all of them. They were pretty interesting and just gave a bit more lore and background, I guess, to characters. I guess let's look at this side story now. The Saintly Seven convene at the Hierophant's Palace where their individual motives start to come to light. Oh god. What are we getting into now? So it appears the duchy intends to capture Glenbrook. But Prince Roland slipped from their grasp and fled to Wolfort. The ink on the treaty is barely dried, and they're already declaring war. And what's more, there's a price on Prince Roland's head. It has spurred the masses into movement. They will bear their fangs at us in time. We cannot leave them to their own devices. I see this as a wonderful opportunity. We can make it clear how we stand after the Salt Iron War. Aye. And I much prefer to extinguish embers than a raging inferno. It sounds like you intend to start a war. Calm yourselves. There is no need to get so worked up over this. It is true that this grave matter may one day affect Hyzant. The music here is incredible. It's so ominous and cool, and very fitting for the, I guess, Land of Salt, Hyzant, <laughs> I don't know. But it is in times like these that we must trust the Hierophant's words more than ever. Okay, I guess there's nothing else left to do but to, I guess, look to the main story. Let's save, just in case. Sir Anoa struggles with the news of his father's collapse, and an unexpected visitor arrives to speak with the new lord. Is he actually dead, or...? You know, just Father, please open your unconscious. eyes. Unconscious. Okay, just there unconscious. Is so much I wish to ask you. Lord Serenoa. I cannot let Father hear how weak I've become. I must be strong. Lord Serenoa, Master Benedict, you have a visitor. Who is it? Lord Silvio Tellior. He wishes for an audience with Lord Serenoa. What business would the Lord of House Tellior have with me? Probably Tell to strike a deal. Shortly. Yes, sir. Every day is busier than the last. We haven't had a moment to catch our breath. You are doing a fine job as head of House Wolfort, Lord Serenoa. Your father would be proud if he could see you now. I could not do it without you, Benedict. Thank you. I feel like Tellier's gonna try and strike a deal with us, like, we'll help you only if you pay up this or something like that. I don't know. Oh no, it's another choice. Already? 
Well, any sub stories? I mean, side stories? Nope, doesn't seem like it. Okay, what are we getting ourselves into now? For the three high houses to join hands and fight the duchy. Oh, that was not what I was expecting Is him that to correct, say. Lord Silvio? But okay. Indeed. I believe it our duty to fight. Some are frozen in fear, trembling at the mere thought of the duchy's power. I feel that joining the three high houses under a single flag is the only way to unite them. My men ready themselves for war as we speak. Come to Telior, and we can strike at Esros together. I feel like he's betraying Prince us Roland right now. Will be safe with us, of course. It's as good a plan as any. You have my thanks for getting the preparations underway. I wonder if Lord Landroy would agree. I doubt House Falks would refuse a fight. Their devotion to the crown knows no bounds. But of course. They reaped great rewards from the bountiful lands won during the war. You propose reuniting the three high houses who led the Salt Iron War to its end. It is heartening to know you would once again lend us your strength. We certainly could use all the help we can get. Though I wish we could resolve matters peacefully. You speak as though your brother is not at fault for all this. Rude. My bride-to-be bears no blame for the Duchy's actions. My apologies. Forgive me for my outburst. But we haven't much time. I would have your answer now. Wait, right now? Shall we accept Lord Silvio's proposal, my lord? Um... I feel like you're <laughs> making me make a big choice right Touch now. the scales, Benedict. We shall decide our path together. And it comes right after I had to beat Aurora too? Like, what the heck? What the heck, Talior? Lord Silvio made the journey to our domain to offer us an alliance. I would know what the others think on the matter. Oh god. Again? With this? Are you heading out, my lord? Definitely. Let me, let me get out of here. Too much drama. Too many things. We can't have one single peaceful day without having to go to battle. Okay, I guess let's talk to everyone. The Lord of House Tellier came all this way to ask for an alliance, but just between you and me, it wouldn't be of much help in a battle. House Tellier is indeed not known for their prowess on the battlefield, but I do not know if we have the luxury of choosing our allies now. We will rebuild Wolfort with our own hand. You drove back the Ace Frosty, so leave the rest to us. You have no idea how relieved I am that our homes were spared from the blaze. My daughter's favorite toy was right where she left it, at home, and my husband will be able to rest easy when he comes home at night. I'm so happy everyone's house is okay. My doll was at a, at home right where I left it, safe and sound. Our homes were spared thanks to you, Lord Serena. The townspeople send their heartfelt gratitude. But it was a hard-won battle. Both the soldiers and the townspeople have seen better days. My people are suffering after a battle on our own soil. I doubt we will be able to face another attack from Mace Frost alone. Silvio is the Lord of House Tellier, but I don't care much for the man to tell the truth. He has some nerve coming around here in such fancy robes while we break our backs repairing the town. Oh, the bird statues are actually gone now. That's interesting. I wonder why. Lord Saranoa, thank you for protecting our house. Obtain large HP recovery pellet times two. Definitely gonna take that. I have no large HP recovery pellets right now, so you know. That's definitely helpful. I'm glad the cat's safe, I guess. Obtain leather. Okay. Obtain enchanting spice times two. Actually, that's probably gonna be helpful. Because I did end up using some spices in the last battle. And those de definitely helped me a ton. I might have to buy some soon, actually. Hopefully I don't forget to buy some before a battle begins. To say I'm disappointed in Lord Silvio would be an understatement. He safeguarded himself in Tellier as Gustadolf invaded the Crown City. Some say it was his duty as Lord to stay and protect his people and domain, but what of his duty to the Crown? 
I suppose we shouldn't be looking to Lord Silvio for any, assemb any semblance of loyalty. You learned all you can about Lord Silvio. Tain Rearguard's Cloak. Ooh, what's this? Decreases damage taken when being hit from behind. Hmm, I don't know who to equip these things to. Hopefully I'll think of someone soon, because they can probably be pretty helpful. Okay, I think I've gotten all the items I can get and talk to- Oh wait, no, there's one. I missed. There we go. Oop. There we go. Obtain quality fiver. I'll take that. That's a uh, rank 2 uh, weapon upgrade, I think. Okay, let's talk to the important people now. Oh dear, how could this happen? And at a time like this? Is something the matter? Whatever it is, I would be happy to help. Well, you see, my daughter and her husband got into a fight and decided to go their separate ways, but I fear for what will happen to their poor son. I don't know what I should do. I fear there is aught you can do. The issue is between the two of them and must be resolved as such. Children are the ones who suffer most when parents fight. I think your efforts are best spent helping them reconcile. Uh, I'm not sure about that. There is not to be gained by forcing themselves to stay together. Separating and starting new lives is for the best. I think the top one's the best choice, honestly. Because we don't want to force them to stay together if they're not good. Let me read that again, actually. I think the top one's the best one, honestly. I suppose you're right. I must just... M I might just make things worse if I stick my nose where it doesn't belong. In the end, it might be for the best that they give each other some space. Thank you, Lord Serenoa. I feel so much better now that we've spoken. I apologize for burdening you with my family's troubles, especially at a time like this. You needn't apologize. No family is perfect. Okay, well, that was kind of unexpected, but I guess that's some free conviction points. Hopefully I got something good out of that. Lord Soranoa, you drove back the Ace Frosty- Oh, sorry, S Frosty forces with such splendor, I expected no less of House Wilfort. Have you heard of how the other houses are faring? To tell the truth, my family lives in the Tellier Domain. They say that Lord Sylvia is not a man of the military arts and fear what should happen were Ace Frost to invade. House Tellier is wealthy and well-connected. I would doubt they would be so easily crushed by the duchy. For better or for worse, Lord Silvio is unchanging. I could stand to learn something from his ever-composed example. If worse comes to worse, your family is always welcomed in Wolfhart, but Lord Silvio leads one of the three high houses and would do whatever it took- Wait, whatever it took? Wouldn't it be whatever it takes to protect his domain? Hmm, not gonna question that out. I'm gonna go with the bottom one, cause... I don't know. It's the most hopeful one, I guess. Actually, no. It's because it, it it paints Lord Silvio like he's someone... I don't know. I'm gonna go with the bottom one. Thank you. You are most gracious, Lord Serenoa. Hearing you say that puts my mind at ease. I only wish House Tellier were so reliable. I shall let my family know what you have told me and invite them here to Wolfort. Yeah, I think that might be your best choice, honestly. I think that's everyone I can talk to here. So I guess it's time to go over there and make a choice. I honestly don't... If I'm being honest, I have no idea what to do here. Because part of me doesn't really trust Silvio. But at the same time, it's technically not a bad idea to attack right now. If we're all working together. Uh, let me take a look at the notes and information I got, actually. House Wolfort's weakness. Repelling the duchy came at no small cost. With its people and soldiers both run ragged, House Wolfort may no longer be able to stave off any further threats to their domain. The current state of affairs puts the very existence of their house in jeopardy. Though one of the three How houses, Tellier lacks both valor and troops, still the support of soldiers at full health is something the exhausted House Wolfort desperately needs. I mean, it sounds like this wants me to protect, I mean, join forces with Silvio, but I still don't feel right about that. I'm really tempted to look this up, but I don't want to spoil myself, so I'm not. I guess I just have to... Actually, let's see what you guys have to say. Saranoa. To say I have no doubts about Lord Sylvia would be a lie. Even so, we are in sore need of allies. If the three high houses stand together, we may be able to turn the tides of war in our favor. Everyone has their suspicions over Lord Sylvia's offer, but I think we can guess his true intentions easily enough. 
Whatever House, Tel house Tellior's aim might be, I'm certain we can use it to our advantage. The High Houses are sworn to protect the Crown, yet Lord Silvio couldn't be bothered to leave Tellior when the capital was in danger. Here's what I think. I can't help but wonder what he's scheming, but if he wants to join forces, I see no reason to refuse him. Okay, see that? They want to join forces, but at the same time, they don't even trust them. We must be prepared for any who would march against us, but our forces are lacking in both number and supplies. House Tellior motives matter not. We could use even those against them, should the need arise. Do you truly think allying ourselves with House Tellior would stop the spread of the war? I... It makes me wonder if it would only be- Oh yeah, that's true. If it would only be pouring oil on the fire. That's kind of right, actually. I hear that the Tellier Domain is known for its wine, not warriors. It makes me wonder if it is truly necessary for us to join forces at a time like this. I would have no qualms if Lord Sylvia were a man of upstanding character, but the rumors I hear only speak to the contrary. That's what I'm saying. Lord Saranoa. Our soldiers are exhausted. After our last battle with Ace, Ace, Ace Frost, sorry, <laughs> I'm gonna keep on calling it Ace Frost on accident. I know we need all the help we can get, but even so, I cannot find it in me to trust House Tellior. I mean, me neither. I've, I don't know what to do. So, if we join forces, we'd be going to Tellior. But that would mean leaving our own domain unguarded, wouldn't it? So shouldn't we stay here and protect it? I mean, no matter what, we're going to war, so technically Frederica's thing doesn't work. And everyone is just based on rumors and the fact that we don't really trust them. I don't know. This is way too hard a decision to be making right after having to choose whether to protect Roland or not. I mean, I don't know what I'm getting myself into is the thing, too. If we go... We don't even know where Tellier is, actually. Because in the demo, the place we went to, I think, if I remember correctly, was the Fox Domain, if you decide not to protect Roland. So I don't know what the best choice would be. You know what? Let's reject the offer. Yeah, I think I'm going to go against everyone. It's probably a bad idea, but... Actually, no, yeah, let's reject it. Okay, I definitely got, I'm saving, I'm definitely saving for this one. I'm kind of scared right now, honestly. Okay, gotta convince Roland, Anna, okay, basically all you guys, okay. I believe his offer to be one worth considering, but if you have any reservations on the matter, I would hear them. Claiming victory in our last battle was no easy feat, and our soldiers have suffered for it. Must we consider taking the fields again so soon? Okay, I think that's the best option, honestly. There are people out there who will stop at nothing to see you dead. I think it is un- Oh yeah, I also forgot about that. It unwise to leave the domain at this time. Lord Sylvia is a man loyal only to himself and one of unfavorable repute with his people. I advise you not to put too much faith in him. I don't think the top one works because no matter what, people are going to come over to battle us. I think the middle one's the best option because it's the fact that Roland can be in danger if we go over there. And we'll basically, we won't be at home where we have a better lay of the land, I think. I think this one works. I suppose. So you think S. Frost might strike, strike after we leave Wilford when we have no safe haven to defend ourselves? I suppose you have a point, my friend. The Tellier Domain is closer to the Duchy than we are, after all. Oh, I did not know that. I probably should have noticed that when I was looking at the side stories. Roland is deep in thought. I don't think that's good. I think... I think for me to convince them, I have to... I have to, um... Make them ask me two things. Oh, well, let's keep on going. Have to convince Benedict. Lord. It would be best for us to refuse Lord Silvio's proposal. Is there something on your mind, my lord? If you have any doubts or concern, pray let them be known. We never know when the Ace Frosty army will strike next. Is it truly safe to leave our domain at a time like this? House Tellier is not known for their prowess in battle. Would there be any merit in not- Okay, that one's not gonna work. That's kinda dumb. <laughs> no matter what, we do need the help, but, you know. 
The duchy has placed a heavy bounty upon Roland's head. Perhaps what Lord Sylvia came here for is not an alliance, but... Ooh. Stirring up some drama. I mean... Benedict already doesn't trust him, so... I feel like we can go with the third one. Let's go with the third one and stir up some drama. To seize Prince Roland. Hmm. I will not deny the possibility indeed. if we think of Face Frost's actions of late. It would not surprise me if they had already brought House Tellier to heal in secret. However, we cannot ignore the fact that the strength of our forces pales in comparison to that of S. Frost. So, Are you not concerned about the size of our own army, Lord Serenoa? Perhaps people will respond to a call of arms. I think it best we ready our own forces before recklessly looking to others for help. Even if I were to doubt, even if I were, I doubt House Hellier could be a much help there. Hmm. I think the third one kind of works, but I really don't want to say the third one because no matter what, some help is better than no help, I think, and that's probably what Benedict's going to say, but although the middle one's the next Spex one, I think, I don't know, it's kind of dumb at the same time, too. I'm going to go with the third one. The size of one force is, in a, is an important factor in war, my lord, and it is true that House Teller does not have many soldiers at its disposal. But neither do we as such. We shouldn't be so hasty in turning away any numbers we can get. Dang it! Actually, I want to try and getting... Let me see if I can get that real quick. I'm just going to load my save file and try and convince Roland again, I guess. I'm going to go with the bottom one again. Let's see. And I guess let's go with the middle one. But of course, our forces were dealt a heavy blow during our last bout with Ace S. Frost. Perhaps it is best to wait until the soldiers have recovered. We may risk endangering ourselves if we agree to Lord Sylvia's plan without a ready force behind us. Benedict- Oh, there we go. Okay, so I was right. It was the middle one. I don't know if we convinced Roland, but hopefully we, we did. At least we got Benedict, so that's helpful. I think I can find a reason. Maybe. Probably not, though. I say we join forces with House Tellier. The more of us, the better, but I can see you don't quite agree, lad. S. Frost is no doubt watching our every move. Leaving our domain may alert them to an alliance and put us in even more danger. Time is of the essence right now. General of Lore is likely desperate to reclaim her honor with a rematch sooner than later. A heavy bounty waits upon Roland's head. We do not know who we can or cannot trust. I kind of want to go with the bottom one, or top one. Let's take a look real quick. I think I'm going to go with the bottom one since he already You're doesn't trust them. No denying that, lad. There's no telling what sort of shady fellows are lurking about, looking to line their pockets with the prince's demise. Even if we could trust Lord Silvio, there's no guarantee his soldiers wouldn't try to get their hands on his highness. In fact, this is just what a S. Frost might be might have been hoping for with that bounty. Tough spot we're in. in any case, my lord, it looks like you've got something else on your mind. Could it be you've got some suspicions of Lord Silvio? Lord Silvio left the safety of his own domain to come here. Something I doubt he would do if he feared an attack from- Oh, wow. I didn't think of that either. That's pretty smart. Because, I mean, his domain is right, right next to the duchy, too. Like we found out a short while ago. If he was truly worried for Roland's safety, I think he would suggest fortifying ourselves in Castle Warfort rather than venturing to Tellur. Lord Silvio did not leave Tellur even when the capital was taken, which makes me wonder why he will leave his safe heaven now. Oh my gosh, all of these are good actually. I'm gonna go with the middle one because the top one and the bottom one are basically the same thing. So it must be the middle one, right? There's no place in Glenbrook more prepared for a fight than here. Wish I could say the same of Tellier and their poor excuse for a castle. It really makes me wonder why they invited us, uh, invited us over there. I think you might have hit the nail right on the head, lad. Erador is deep in thought. Cool. Lord Serenoa, I believe we must use every tool available to us if we are to survive. We do not know why Aethrost invited Glenbrook. I think it best we be cautious and not rush long into an alliance. 
We would leave ourselves vulnerable by venturing outside our domain. We needn't rely on others just yet. If we were to be attacked, we could make our stand at Castle Wilford. Uh, I think the top one or middle one are the best choice. Actually, no, the top one's kind of dumb. I think the middle one's the best one. Let's try the middle one. Quite true, if we were met by the Ace Frosty forces outside the castle, we could neither drive them back nor retreat. In that case... Even so, dang it, I do not think we could stay holed up in the castle forever. Dang it. Okay, I want to try convincing her. Let me try again. Sorry, I'm kind of having fun. I'm really enjoying the convincing aspect of this game, so <laughs> sorry if this is kind of annoying. It's also kind of fun looking at the answers they give us for each response, so I kind of like doing this. She thinks we need whatever support we can get. Because we can't stay holed up and these two are basically the same, so... Um... Let's go with the top one, Perhaps. maybe. Let's see what it says again. Indeed, we do not yet know who fights under the Duchy's banner. The Alliance may be a ruse by Lord Sylvia to capture Prince Roland. Perhaps I should rethink our best course of action. Oh, that was it? Hmm. That was not the one I was expecting, actually. Let me take a look at the log again. We do not know why Ace Frost invaded... Well, I guess it kind of makes sense. I don't know. Wait, what did you say? You have truly grown into a most reliable leader, Sir Lord Serenoa. Oh, that's nice. I know how you feel, lad. Now I need some time to figure out how I feel. Cool. It would do you well to talk with the others and hear the thoughts on the matter. Your words have shed new light on the situation, Lord Serenoa. I would have a moment to reconsider where my token will fall. Okay. I think we might have gotten everyone. Hopefully. Okay, time to commence the boating. And persuasion phase and commence boating, yes. It is time to cast our votes. Do we accept House Tellior's proposal, or go our own way? You know, uh, I just made a dumb connection, <laughs> sorry. This kind of reminds me of the Magic Conch shell. I don't know why. <laughs> I just came up with that, but maybe I'm just being dumb. Am I the only one that thinks that now, whenever they talk about the skills of convection? I just hear, should we go to war? Um, skills of convection, conviction, sorry. Well, actually, what were they called again? Actually, I don't, I guess, okay, whatever. Uh, but yeah, whenever, now whenever I look at it, I just think, should we go to war, skills of conviction? And it just goes, no. I don't know why. I can't stop making that connection now. Approach the scales of conviction with your token at the ready. I believe in you. I believe in you. Wait, sorry. I believe you are right, my friend. Yay, someone's on our side. You make a convincing argument. My I cast my token in, in with yours, my lord. You have my vote. I put my faith in your plan, Lord Serenoa. Forgive me, lad. Dang it, Eridor, really? I, I was so excited, I thought I got everyone. Sorry, lad, just can't find it in me to agree this time. I was sure I got you, Eridor. What the heck? The scales of conviction will illuminate the path we've chosen. Accept Sylvia's proposal and make for Tellier. Of course you did it, Erador. Reject Sylvia's proposal. The way forward is decided. We deny House Tellior's proposal and weather this fight alone. I mean, we can still talk to House Fox, you know. I feel like House Fox is pretty dependable, you know. It wouldn't hurt to ask them for help. Are you mad? Yes, we are. 
you would stand idly by while our kingdom is in grave danger. This is the path we have chosen. I hope you understand. I do not. You must reconsider. Or else House Teliard too will face Esfrost's wrath. And why would that be our concern? Oh, dang. We are in no condition to fight, Lord Silvio. It is as simple as that. Then I pray something more than death awaits us both. Benedict's out here saying, Objection. The weather vane completed. I mean, you could just come to our side, you know. Lord Silvio of Telior offers the solitary House Wolfort an ally, and a place of protection for Roland. But Serenoa chooses to walk his own path, even if he must do so alone. Silvio leaves with a disquieting look in his eyes. Chapter 8, Part 2, Parting Ways. Oh god. That doesn't sound good. Oh god. Talior, you're about... I hope you don't side with the duchy. Please don't side with the duchy, Talior. Oh, hello. Uh, Who are you? No, no, no. Spare me. I beg you. That's enough, Rufus. You call these men soldiers, Silvio? They haven't got any spine. I feel like I've seen that face before, actually. Like on another character in this. Uh, mercenary Rufus Tyran. A mercenary known as Hero's Vane, whose only loyalty lies with money, his life's greatest joy is cutting confident warriors down to size. Oh god. Don't Save tell me you're Ablora 2.0. We will strike at their castle soon enough. Oh my god. Ha! Sounds like they saw straight through your Oh my god. Plan. What could a lowly bounty hunter know of a lord's struggles? Without Roland, my house is doomed. Tell your... You... They mm. call you heroes, Bane, right? That is all... Let me take a look again. What did it just say? What could I a lowly bounty hunter know of a... Without Roland, my house is doomed. Oh my god. Oh my god, Sylvia. I'm so mad now. I can't believe for a second that I was like... Oh, maybe things would have gone... Maybe somewhat fine if I went there. Dang it. You need to. I'm so annoyed now. And do it, I shall. The only one you need alive is the prince, right? I really hope the duchy takes <laughs> takes their land away. I hope by the end of this chat. Oh, hello. More character stories. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I love them already. I think this is the one that was in the demo, actually. I don't know who you are, but I love you already. Are you a clown? Oh my gosh. Yes. It's time for new characters. Although we just got like three last last chapters, so you know. I need to see this right now, actually. Let me save it and we can get into that right now. Now that I think about it, that's another mage, isn't it? I hope they're not both two mages, because I feel like we have a decent amount of mages now, don't we? No, it's not too great. I think we're at a decent amount of mages. I guess another one wouldn't hurt. Let's see, character stories. A shaman happens upon a village and uses her power over the weather to bring succor to those suffering from drought. Oh, it is her. It's been a while. I was expecting to get you much earlier, actually, so... Kind of interesting that we got you two chapters, chapters later. The sun's a harsh mistress, ain't she? If she sticks around much longer... My fields are apt to wither from the attention. I'd give my firstborn for a drop of rain. Aye. And it ain't just the crops what are worse for wear. I'd cry over our lot, but not but dust would pour from my eyes. 
How pitiless, the caprices of nature. What grudge do the heavens bear to make the poor souls who tend the land suffer so? I would be remiss to let such suffering continue. If fate will show you no mercy, then I shall. You begged for even a single drop of rain. I shall give you more. Behold, as I flood this desiccated land with nourishment. Huh? What's that the lady said? I believe she means to pull rain from a cloudless sky. Ha! I'd have more luck getting milk from a bull. You must tell me if you do. We're in sore need of a miracle. A pleasure is always to see him, Lord. You've come just in time. This lass is about to put on a show. I am called Dizana. Profile. Oh, she's so pretty. I forgot how she looked like. I really love her design. It's incredible. She kind of reminds me of Petra from, from Fire Emblem Three Houses. Mainly because of the face paint. And also like the wild look she has. Isana Kulink. Kulinka? I'm not... I hope I didn't just butcher that, sorry. A woman descended from a long line of shaman, sh shamans, shamans, shamo, sham, uh, I, mm, I used to know how to say this. I don't know why I suddenly forgot. Uh, shamans, that sounds weird, but I guess that'll do. A long line of shamans with the ability to change the weather. She wanders the land in search of people who might need her powers that she may provide them succor. Interesting. Allow me to banish the sun's cruel rays from your domain, that your people may see a measure of succor. Banish the sun? I wasn't aware it was in the habit of taking orders. You're being real sassy right now, Hewitt. Oh, hello. That was pretty cool looking, actually. Well, slap my ass like I was just born. Oh my god. Rain. Honest to goodness, rain. I love that. How did... I, I've never witnessed a miracle like this. Well, you better believe it, Hewitt. You just got proven wrong. Zana, was it? On behalf of my people, allow me to express to you my deepest gratitude. There is no need for such formalities. I seek only to alleviate the suffering of the downtrodden in any way I can. If it is not too bold of me to ask, do you have need of a humble shaman within your race? I mean, yes, please. Tales of House Wolfort's magnanimity have reached even my remote village. It would be an honor to serve you, my lord. We would welcome you with open arms, and the honor would be entirely ours. Doubtless, we will have occasion to call upon your talents sooner rather than later. Asana joined your forces. Cool. A shaman with weather at her whim excels at wind and lightning magic, summons a rainstorm. Oh, sorry, summons rainstorms and tempests to turn the tide of battle. Cool. How does rain magic work, actually? Does it actually do damage, like water damage, or is it just rain and it's just there to do lightning damage? Because Spark was pretty useful with um with Narve last episode, because um I had Corinth and cast ice magic, and then Frederica uh, by accident set some of it on fire, and we had water. Then we had Narve use Spark, and that did so much damage, since people were in water. Okay, who's next? Saranoa and company encounter a girl in a desolate rocky area who tells them she was once part of a circus troupe. Oh, it is a clown! Yay! I hate clowns in real life, because I've always been afraid of them since I was a kid, but in video games they're cool. As long as they're not horror clowns. It looks like she's juggling Pokeballs, actually. Hey, what's a child like you doing in such a lonely place? I have nowhere else to go. Where are your parents? They died years ago. 
My lord. My name is Serenoa. What's yours? Picoletta. Picoletta. Oh, she's cute. That's adorable. A young girl orphaned by war. She does not know where her true home is, but considers the traveling circus troupe she spends her days with to be her family. Aw. Picoletta, you throw that ball with such skill. Now it we're gonna send you job. to war. When I throw this ball, everyone applauds. Well, they used to. But the circus is gone now, so I'm all on my own. I really love what her are you voice. Doing here, mister? It's very fitting. We are trying to put an end to this war. I hate war. War made everyone go away. You're really gonna end the war? Then let me go with you. Uh I can throw my ball and help you fight the bad people. We're literally sending a little girl clown to battle. Oops. There goes my tummy grumbling again. I was not expecting my Lord. We cannot simply leave this poor child here. So let's send her to war. Because, you know, that's smart. I know. All right then, Piccoletta. Come with us. But before we go fight the bad people, let us fill our bellies. After that, perhaps you could show us some tricks with your ball. Sure thing. That's what I'm best at. I mean, she doesn't have to fight, you know, Sarah Noah. You can just take this child to your domain and just take care of her. I mean, now that I think about it, we have a ton of useful units that could actually help end the war. I mean, we have mage that controls weather. She can help with crops and other things, actually. We have a... Uh... We have Jens, who is a blacksmith who can make things. Hello. We literally have a merchant, a bar Okay, barkeeper is kind of out of place, but, you know, it's something. We got some... Actually, what else do we have? Oh, yeah, we got a ton of great mages, too. Researchers, healers, things like that. We can literally just leave this war and live independently, actually. An expert in offense. Oh. Oh, that's. Uh, cool, I guess. An expert in offensive items increases the range of offensive items. Can summon a de Oh, a decoy of herself. Okay, that's pretty cool. I was not expecting offensive items to be a thing, apparently. I thought Medina would just handle all the items, but I guess that's cool. What level are you guys? Oh, you already have lightning? Cool. Wait, but you don't have right of rain. Oh, okay. The lightning time damage to an enemy and have a chance to paralyze them for two turns. Effects spread on water. The wind type magic damage to all enemies within range and change the direction they face. Interesting. A curse strike decreases an enemy's luck for three turns if you deal damage to them. Oh, oh, okay, that's... Mm, I hope that includes magic, because if, if it's just physical attacks, that's kind of lame. Oh, they're at level 11. They're on par with my lowest level units, actually. Interesting. Uh, item launcher. Increases targetable range by 2 when using an item on an enemy. Interesting. Decoy. Summon a clone on a selected square. Clones previously summoned with this ability will disappear. Can I do anything with the clones, or are they just there? Intensive items. Increases damage dealt by items used on enemies. Hmm. Okay. We got ball toss and... Illusion, ban Illusion banish sounds interesting. Oh my gosh, she has 50 magic attack? Is that her highest magic attack? Oh no, she's still she's still below um Gila and Frederica. But that's probably because I haven't um actually Gila and Frederica are level 12. Oh dang. That's high attack then. Well that's good. Her magic defense is it Eh, it's a bit lower than No, actually it's still good. 
25 speed, that's pretty good. Movement is 4, that kinda sucks actually. We don't have that many units with only 4 movement action. No, no we do. I forgot about a ton of you. A ton of you guys have 4 movement. That sucks. Uh, you have 5 movement, okay that's normal. Oh, I was like, why does Gila have- I mean, why does Huet have 32 jump in it? because she has a bird. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Glad we got two new units. Oh, I forgot we promoted Saranoa. Okay, I guess that's good. Okay, time for side stories. Did I forget anything else? Doesn't seem like it. With the Crown City captured, Gustadolf proceeds with his plan. I beg you, sir, give me one more chance. I shall not fail again. Didn't we see this last time? We are already taking measures against House Wolfort. A suitable pawn has showed itself before us. Though, perhaps, I should be more wary of my own family than any other. I mean, you're not wrong. Those twins will probably kill you. Falks is all that remains of the three high houses. I trust you know what to do, Avlora. Oh, God. Lord Landroy Fox is famed for his bow arm. He had the pluck to fire at your master during the war. Do you think you can oh. him? Who's her master? Without a doubt. I wonder if we can actually recruit the three high houses, now that I think about it. The bandits Travis and Trish discuss rumors of a hefty bounty on a certain someone's head. Oh, it's you guys. I was like, I wonder if these guys are ever going to show up again. I thought you guys were just going to be dead and gone after that first chapter. But I guess not. I don't know what to expect now that S. Frost has taken over Glenbrook. I was hoping I could recruit you guys, actually, since I kind of like your design. Put a huge bounty on the prince's head. We can make a killing if we catch him. Her voice actually sounds kind of familiar now that I think about it. I always dreamed of kidnapping royalty. I wonder but who voice acted the prince her. of a crumbling kingdom. Mm. They'd probably kill him if we turn him over. The reward is tempting, though. The reward is tempting, though. Interesting. Okay, I guess it's time to get back to the main story. Tensions grow as Anna brings news to Saranoa, shedding new light on their situation. Oh god, Hyacinth. What did you do now? Dang it, Hyacinth. Please don't tell me you did. You betrayed us too. The Tellior army has entered our domain. Oh no, it's just that. Yes. Okay, that's fine. The vanguard is nearing Castle Woolfort as we speak. It will not be long until the rest arrive. I knew his intentions were not as pure as he made them seem. But to think he would attack so soon after proposing an alliance. According to our spies, Lord Silvio has been in contact with Esfrost. There is a reason he is known as an opportunist. This was all a plan to destroy us. Dang it, Silvio, you idiot. So he wished to secure Prince Roland to use as leverage with Esfrost. I was also told that House Tellior has hired a man named Rufus as a bodyguard. What do you know about this man? Wait, can we He's actually kill Silvio? Heroes, Whose only loyalty is to coin. That said, he's claimed the lives of countless famed warriors. It would be wise not to underestimate. I mean, we have Lionel. Lionel can Lord probably Sylvia pay him would off. Hire such a man. It means he's serious. We must plan accordingly. Understood. Gather the others. We have much to discuss.
No more sub stories. Okay. Knowing of Silvio's betrayal, Serenoa summons the War Council for an urgent meeting. So Silvio has betrayed us. Yep. Is anyone I actually surprised though, from aside from me, being the idiot that you I am? Correct. He most likely wishes to use you to curry favor with S. Frost. That bastard! Think he would throw his own countrymen underfoot? We haven't time to get emotional, Eridor. They are on their way here. I beg to differ. There's no better time. I'm trembling with rage. As am I. We'll teach oh, that was cute. She was actually trembling. Kept more bloodshed for my sake. Prince Roland, we have no choice True. but to act. To be fair, this was not your fault. And the enemy is our former compatriots. Sylvia kind of had this well coming to him. about the traps below. We may have to face them head on at the gates. We need all the help we can get. Please fight with us. This is no time to waver. We must stand together if we wish to survive. Together we can overcome this. To arms! Okay, before we get into all of that, I think I'm gonna go grind my new characters up real quick. Well, actually, I need to see what level I need to be for this battle, too. So it has come to this. We must prepare. We must be prepared now that House Tellier marches against us. The town lies past the gates. I won't let a single one of those traitorous bastards through. The townspeople have been evacuated to the castle. We cannot let the House Tellier make it past the walls. Oh god, I just realized. Is this a defend the location fight? I hope not, because that's probably going to be annoying. I thought we could get... I thought we could rest for a bit once we chased off those these frosty dogs, but I was wrong. You and me both, actually. Everything is progressing apace, my lord. The Vayers will be ready by the time the enemy arrives. But the townspeople's grow wary. We must stop Lord Sylvia at the gates no matter the cost. As if it weren't bad enough, they're throwing in their lot with the cutthroats who slayed our king. Now they're after his son. That spineless coward will regret ever marching against us. Neither he nor that mercenary will get any mercy from me. Oh, that's, that's cute. And funny, sorry. I cannot forgive Lord Silvio for turning us against our own countrymen. As a fellow servant to the crown, I must show him the error of his ways. Tellier is a high house, just like Wilford, but now we have to turn our blades against them. Our kingdom has been brought to a civil war. Oops, sorry. Our kingdom has been brought to a civil war, and for what? The town is still in one piece, but I cannot say the same with the people's heart. Lord Silvio's betrayal of their trust is unforgivable. The town took the brunt of the damage in the last battle. It would not. It would stand to. It would stand to reason that we now make our stand here, at the castle walls. I was prepared to lose my home in the battle, but it still stands, thanks to you. I count my blessings to have a kind ruler like you, Lord Serrano. I know it's safer for us to stay in the castle, but sometimes it gets hard to breathe in there with all the other townsfolk. I heard Lord Silvius hired a bodyguard who calls himself Hero's Vane. I admit, I'm a little envious of his name. <laughs> well, that's kinda- well, that's funny. Range Ice Stone, thank you. Obtain- ooh, money, thank you. We're probably gonna need a lot of ranged attackers for this battle now that I'm thinking about it. Since we have most of the walls blocked off. We're probably gonna have to do what we did the last battle and have just people block off these entrances. And also have ranged casters and bow people around the edge to keep people away from the, I guess, um, blockade. Added leather from Kin to notes. Who's Kin? Have we heard that name before? I feel like we have- oh, hello. Obtain a Vigorine Spice times three. Thank you. I feel like we've heard that name before, actually. Obtained iron times three. Cool. And 500 coin. Also take that. Uh, let's talk to you first, important person. I wonder what the Holy State thinks of our situation. We went to their aid during the Salt Iron War and stopped the fighting before it could claim any more lives. I almost wish they would extend a helping hand to us now, and yet. We may need all the help we can get, but asking Heisen for aid might result in a war not unlike that of 30 years ago. 
The alliance has been shattered, and House Tellier has turned against us. It seems almost foolish to rely on the goodwill of others now. We share a common enemy with Heisen. To that end, I surmise the Holy State is waiting to see if we would make a formidable ally. All of these are pretty good, actually. I don't know which one's best. I mean, we're already at war, so I don't think the top one works, actually. The middle one is kind of pessimistic, so I don't know. I don't think I want to go with that one. Let's be a bit hopeful and go with the bottom one. Those high sentients owe us their lives, and yet they're sizing us up while we struggle to survive. Masons operate on more than just emotions and unpaid debts, I'm afraid. I suppose so, but maybe that means Heisen will come to our aid if we prove ourselves formidable. Lord Saranoa, this is our chance to show the realms what happens when they make an enemy of our house. Precisely, and I would have no other than Wolford's soldier by my side while we do. And by soldiers, you mean the unique characters that actually help us out during battle. Because soldiers have done nothing for us so far, unfortunately. Hey Benedict, what are you about? S. Frost captured the capital and dealt a heavy blow to our forces. I can only surmise how Stellier now cowers in fear of the Duchy's strength. Their fear is understandable, even so I imagine they will retreat if they find themselves fighting a losing battle. Tellier Domain is closer to Ace Frost than our own, and sense the reason that their fear will be greater as well. House Tellier's hands are yet clean unlike our own. It makes me wonder if Lord Silvio is the greater ruler between us. Definitely not. Not not in this lifetime. I think... I don't know which one works, actually. Because I definitely feel like they might retreat if they feel they're losing, but at the same time... I feel like the middle one's also a good answer. Let's go with... Mm, let's go with the middle one. Indeed, where Ace Frost descends any semblance of resistance from them, their domain would face the same fate as the Crown City. I have no doubt that House Tellier marches first and foremost in self-preservation. They may have their reasons, but we have ours as well. We cannot let ourselves be beat. Aye, my lord. We must repulse any attacks on our domain, even if it be from our own countrymen. Okay, I think that's everything we can do right now, so... Actually, we got some notes. I mean, information? Notes? Which one was it? Notes. There we go. Letter from Kin. My Wilford cousin. Some time has passed since I last... Wait. My Wilford cousin. Some time has passed since last I was able to write. How for you? We are as hell as ever, and indeed happier for our, our eldest daughter is to be wed. The little girl you always dote on, on has grown into a fine woman. The ceremony will be held on XX day of XX month at our home in Tellior. I know the trek this long, but we cannot imagine celebrating without you there, and our daughter so wishes to see you again. If that is not enough to tempt you, perhaps you might begin packing when you hear we've procured several bar bar ugh, barrels of the finest wine for the occasion. Distant though we may be, we are still family. You are my brother, if not in blood, then in my heart. We'll love to everyone in Wolfort. Or tell your cousin. Is this from Silvio? No, right? I don't think they're family, right? Letter from Kin. Who the heck is Kin? Actually, don't we have... Okay, I was like, maybe we have character information, but no, we don't. I forgot. Okay, I think that's all we can do. So I guess it's time for this battle. Hopefully things go well. And exploration, yes. Now we wait for them to make their move. Okay, what level do I gotta be for this? I'm guessing 12, right? Yeah, recommended level 12. Thankfully we already have mo- oh, hello. I kinda forgot about Fox for a second there. I wonder how he's de dealing with this. Oops, wrong thing. I guess let's check in real quick. What if Sylvia's betrayal reaches Landroy's ears? My lord, House Telior's betrayal has been confirmed. It appears Lord Silvio plans to launch a surprise attack on House Wolford. This is absolute madness. To think I would see the day three high houses fight each other. The glorious Glenbrook of the past is no longer. 
The dark days of war are upon us once more. My lord, the Esfrosti army has entered our domain. They demand our surrender. Oh no, I forgot. I really Ready forgot about Aurora. I really hope they don't kill Landroy. Because I actually kind of like Landroy. He's pretty cool. Okay, before I go to this battle, I'm gonna grind up some of, my, some of my units real quick, so time to pause the episode for a bit, and I guess I'll see you guys once I'm done grind- oh my gosh, that's a lot of characters here now. But yeah, I'll, actually, let me talk to you real quick. Lord Sereno, allow me to express my gratitude once more for accepting one such as myself into your rank. When this war began, I wondered what I should be doing as a shaman, but then you came along and I knew it was fate. I promise to do all I can to be of service to House Wilford. Okay, that's nice. Lord Tiranoa, listen to this. I was throwing my ball the other day and everyone started clapping. I love it here. I'll do my best to put a smile on everyone's face. Aw, that's cute. Okay, anyways. I'll see you guys once I'm done grinding, I guess. I will fight to my last breath. Not relent! Just tell me what to do. What's about? Well, congratulations are in order. Joy pain! I did it! My power! Time for some sources! Ah. New power overflows within me. Okay, just fin finished grinding everyone up, and so far, I'm gonna say I like I like both of our new characters. I was not expecting what Picoletta does actually, or Picoletta. <laughs> I'm not sure how you say her name. I'm gonna say Picoletta for now. They probably said it uh, when we got their character stories, and I forgot already or didn't pay attention. But the way she works, well. Her decoys work is apparently you can set one up and it basically it can move around and act like a unit and also attack. The only thing that I didn't like about the decoy was that apparently, although it can attack and kill enemies, it doesn't give her Picoletta any EXP, so she gains nothing from that. They're just there to deal um, ship damage, which is actually pretty good because it also kind of aggro's other characters. I'm not sure if it actually has aggro on it, but from what I could tell it was attracting attracting the attention of all the enemies when it was nearby, so that was pretty cool. As for her, I don't really have much to say about her right now. She's a good unit, but until she gets right range, she's gonna be just alright for now, because she really needs that rain in order to deal that big lightning damage, and I'm guessing Rite of Tempest probably increases her wind damage somehow, but until then, She's been kind of alright. It's mainly because I haven't gotten used to the weird cone shape that Rite of Wind has, which is the same one that um, his Whirlwind has. I just, eh, it's kind of alright. It's difficult to get enemies into the position you want to finish them off with it. But aside from that, I think we're good right now. Got everyone to level 12. Nobody learned anything new, I think, except um, for Julia, who got KOTP. But, uh, that's it. Guess it's time for the real battle to begin. I'm really hoping this one won't take too long like the Avlora battle, but... I guess I'll find out. Dang it! How do I... How did I get two character stories during that? Huet and Eridor embarked on a hunt, and the former reflects on how she came into her position at the prince's side. Interesting. So we can get multiple of the same character. That's cool. A whole day of hunting, and this is all I have to show for it. Wanted to give Lord Sarah Noah something meaty for once. A deer is no easy prey. You are a skilled hunter. One deer to your three boar? <laughs> it's plain who the better of us is. I don't reckon you let a single one escape. Could be hunting is your true calling. Perhaps. 
Before I was knighted, I was keeper of the Hawk's Roost. And besides, I come from a long line of hunters. That's so. And what drove you to fight men for a living? Lenbrook put out a call for Hawk Riders. That they might challenge S. Frost's aerial superiority. I answered that call. My training was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. But I won a position in the Kingsguard, where I petitioned to serve Prince Roland personally. Seeing you in action, I'm sure you could have made a fine commander. Yet you stuck by the Prince's side. Yes, I did. Oh. Do we maybe have feelings in the air? Possibly. Oh, hello. Never mind. Flashback. Flugi is yet to return. I hope he isn't in danger. I love that her hawk's name is Flugi. That's adorable What's and funny. What's this then? A traveler out here all alone, huh? And in sore need of protection by my reckoning. Hand over your coin purse and maybe we can reach an arrangement. Bandits? Here? How can I be so careless? I'd advise against running. Ain't nowhere for you to go. Enough! Are you hurt? I'm fine, thanks to you. Had you not showed up when you did, I could have ended up dead. You have my gratitude. That's a nice animation, Is actually. Is that your hawk? It guided me here. I was in the middle of a hunt, but your bird cried out as if calling to me. Thank heavens I did not lose that arrow. I've never known hawks could be so wise. His name is Flugi, and he's more than my hawk. He's my closest companion. The bandits are growing more bold by the day. It is best you returned home. Wait! I have scarce little to give in the way of coin, but still, there must be something I can do to repay you. Think nothing of it. It is the royal family's duty to protect our subjects. The royal... Good heavens! You're Prince Roland! Forgive me, your highness. There's no need for all that stuffy formality. May we meet again soon. Yes, your highness. That was my first meeting with the prince. He saved my life, and for that, that I shall be forever in his debt. I could settle for no less than the king's guard. I hope we get more of that. Maybe uh, a Hewitt and Roland thing. A character story thing, I mean. I'm gonna be honest, I kind of started getting annoyed by Hewitt because she was, she was rude to Frederica and then she was rude to the weather mage just a bit ago, but that made me like her a whole lot more again. So it was nice seeing that, actually. Okay, let's see. Narvae speaks with Gila about her home of Hyacinth and his grandfather's place in their history. Ooh, hello. Lore for Narvae, the best boy? Yes, please. That should do it. You should be able to use that arm just fine in no time. Many thanks, lad. You truly are a talented one. My apologies for treating you like an intruder the other day. I was just about to ask myself, watch that be the same guy that um was kicking him out whenever we got him. That's cool. Think nothing of it, my good man. If you need anything else, I'm more than happy to help. Your magic never ceases to amaze. Did you learn everything from your grandfather? You bet I did. The Archmage Grandante taught me everything I know. Grandante? There's something I've been meaning to ask you, Norm. Ask away. 
I was in Hyzand for a short time, studying at the Ministry. No doubt you know it's considered the greatest authority in this world when it comes to matters arcane. Their library contains everything from records of magically enhanced soldiers to oh, hello? technical tomes and much, much more. I like to learn Their about magically enhanced soldiers. Their chronicles magic, too, were the most comprehensive in our realm. And yet, I do not recall seeing even a single mention of a mage named Grandante. One would think the achievements of such a powerful sorcerer would be recorded somewhere. Why are they not? Those awful Hyzantians. Oh. Truly, they have no shame. Narv? The chronicles you speak of? In truth, they were written by my grandfather's own hand. What? what But then why is he not credited by name? He refused to do the research the former Hierophant ordered of him, and was branded a heretic and unbeliever. They erased his name and achievements from the records, and made it like he never existed at all. He was then banished from the city and died in exile, his name all but forgotten. Oh, poor Narve. It's all their fault. No one knows of the Archmage Grandante. I... I had no idea. I was not expecting this much These lore today. These robes were once his. They're the only remaining proof that he once walked this realm. So you carry his memory with you everywhere you go. I promised myself I would make the Archmage Grandante's name known around the world. So I'm going to work harder than I've ever worked before. Until all in the realm know his story. And in the process, I'll become the greatest mage this world has ever seen. No. That's the spirit. Thanks, Gila. Just you watch, Grandfather. I'm going to make you proud. Literally best boy in the whole game right there. I love him so much. Okay. I was planning to do the battle this episode and, you know, keep up the pacing we've been keeping up till this point, but I'm gonna be honest, this episode I think is pretty long already. I think we got so much lore, so many character stories, so much story progression that I don't think we can do this battle in this episode because it will make it a bit too long. Because I think the I still haven't edited the um Avora battle episode, but I'm pretty sure that one's already pretty long too. So <laughs> let's see. Hmm. It kind of feels bad not doing that battle, but. I don't want to make this video too long. I think I'm just going to end the episode here. Oh yeah, one thing I did forget to mention, I guess, about the um, battle I just had. That wasn't a, that wasn't a too bad battle either, actually. It was pretty easy, if I'm being honest, I think. Because it didn't have anything too strong or scary. The hardest battle so far has been the one that had limited turns. I think it was this one, right? Yeah. And the only reason that one was hard was because it was limited turns, and that kept on getting in the way of grinding. Let me see if I can upgrade some weapons, actually, real quick as well, before I end off the episode. Since we got some new characters. Oh, I love her upgrade. Actually, what's her weapon again? Isn't it like a racket or something like that? I think that's what it's called. Her whip. Oh, it is a racket. Okay. You have a whip, and you have a hardwood staff. Okay. Her weapon is definitely interesting, to say the least. You can get deal greater damage, uh, increased, increased damage dealt by ball toss. Well, we don't have that yet, but it'd probably be useful once we get it. Let's get the damage up for now. For you... We can increase weapon, max HP. I think I'm gonna get the lightning damage increase. Oh, it's during rainstorms. Oh, both of these are during weather, which I can't even do yet, so. I might as well get the lightning since I think I'm getting um rain first. I haven't used gems at all during a battle yet. I've only been grinding him up. I really feel bad for gems, but he's not really the best unit in the world right now, so I don't know. I think that's all I'm doing for now, actually, so 
Guess it's time to end off the episode. Let me get out of this place real quick. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We got a lot done this episode, mainly story related things. And at least one encampment battle, so that was good I guess. I got to grind up my units again. Um, this episode's gonna be the, I think, heaviest story driven episode we have so far. Just because we had so many character stories, so much story progression as well with um, side stories. But I enjoyed it. I really like learning more about each of the characters and their interactions with one another. It was pretty great. And I look forward to next episode when we'll be doing, I guess, this battle. Hopefully it's not, you know, too terrible. I am slightly scared of that bandit guy they called or showed us. But I think we should be able to deal with it fine. Hopefully, maybe. Hoping I'm praying. <laughs> but aside from that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Bye!